the previous video in this series we tried powering up the new revision of the Z80 project board for the first time. It's a big uh, step from the previous version. It includes um, complete buffering for the data address lines. It also includes uh, a DMA um, counter and control system for our floppy drive interface and it includes the floppy drive interface as well. There are some other changes but um, they're um, not important at this point. I'll come back to those in future videos. Now the tests I carried out in the previous video all, all seemed to pass quite well. It did seem to behave itself. I have since, as you can see, fitted the remaining floppy drive interface components. I've got a floppy drive plugged in. I have not tried powering this up yet with the floppy drive attached. I've also fitted the LEDs over on the left here and uh, these LEDs are used to indicate the status of the floppy drive and DMA control latch. That's the same latch that was previously used on the floppy drive interface. Um, but it now also controls, in theory, should control the DMA interface. Now, all I've really done so far with this in terms of testing, I've been through and tested the rest of the circuits as far as I could before I uh, went on and fitted the floppy drive interface components. But the only thing I've done so far with the floppy drive interface is with the floppy drive itself disconnected, I powered up the board and I adjusted the um, floppy drive parameters, that's the pulse width and the frequency for the data slicer. Now someone did ask me in one of the comments whether this could be modified to use 8 inch drives and you actually don't need to modify it. The controller I'm using will um, cater to uh, talking with either 5 and a quarter or 8 inch drives. All you need to do is adjust the timing and pulse width to suit and the values I've chosen for the pot and the variable capacitor here um, do have the authority to pull in and adjust to whichever of the drive types you want to use. So the way this um, circuit's configured, you can use five and a quarter inch drives, um, either single density or double density, single sided or double sided, one drive, two drives, up to four drives, and also if you want to, you could use eight inch drives as well. So it's quite flexible um, but of course that just uh, requires us to adjust it accordingly. Now there are many things that can stop this from working of course and if we look back at the previous version, the version 4 board, uh, we had this. We had the board itself and we had the floppy drive interface. Now the floppy drive interface is just the part in the bottom right hand corner here and I have also included the DMA um, control circuit as well. So before I power this up, just a, a quick note on what this um, yellow jumper is for. Um, as I say, I haven't powered this up yet and I don't want to damage the floppy drive controller or the floppy drive itself. Uh, because if there's an error in the electronics, then it could well do some damage to something by selecting more than one parameter at the same time. So what this is for, it temporarily um, forces the... Uh, mode of operation for the control circuits so that it can only select uh, one um, drive, it can't select multiple drives. And we'll know if it's um, required or not when we power this up and try and boot from the floppy um, disk. Um, we should only see the blue LED come on. If we get the blue and the yellow come on at the same time, then uh, something's wrong. If only the blue comes on, then of course I'll be able to remove this, but uh, this is a first run, so I need to test this fairly carefully. I've got the uh, clock frequency set to 5 MHz. We need that because I'm using the ROM we used previously. It's the same ROM, I just unplugged it from the version 4 board, dropped it into this board, and that uses programmed in out for the floppy drive interface. Now, I was planning to incorporate DMA from the start, so the um, control codes sent in theory should disable the DMA circuit and allow us to use programmed in out. It's not quite as straightforward as having the two circuits sitting independently side by side. 
because the floppy drive interface is um, it's very integrated with the DMA so to talk to the floppy drive interface now we have to kind of talk through the DMA circuits and that means that uh, all the configuration has to work correctly and once again we have two LEDs over here one the bottom blue one is uh, DMA so that should be off because we are using programmed in out and that's controlled through the uh, floppy drive interface control latch and then we have one for direction which determines whether we're reading to um, memory from the drive or vice versa um, but because we've disabled in theory at least DMA that um, shouldn't really do anything uh, so we'll try and power this up now um, as I said I haven't tried powering it up yet with the floppy drive plugged in so um, I have fitted the floppy drive interface connector as you can see and so fingers crossed we'll power this up and uh, hope no magic smoke escapes Okay, looking good so far. We're getting the uh, NVRAM checksum error um, because there's no battery attached to the board, so it's not retaining the non-volatile RAM contents. So the checksum doesn't match each time we boot it up. Uh, but um, looking good so far. Okay, so the first thing I will try doing, now it's powered up and we haven't got any uh, obvious signs of uh, distress. Incidentally, I've got the power supply now adjusted to 1.6 amp current limit. draws more power of course now that we have uh, these components fitted. Um, I'm going to close the door on the floppy drive. There's no disk in here um, but what we should now be able to do is um, hit the B command, the boot command and we should see the light on the front of the drive illuminate and the motor should start up and we can keep an eye on the LEDs over here and make sure that only the blue comes on so we'll try pressing the and B key and uh, see what happens. So the blue LED is on and the lights on on the drive. So that's a very good sign. It means that fundamentally it's doing what we expect. We've got the message on the screen saying booting from floppy disk. Um, but of course nothing's happening because there is no disk in here. So we'll reset. I've got the same boot disk I had previously. So th this contains a uh, very simple second stage bootloader so the sequence is if you recall the bootloader in the monitor that's the one in the ROM will try to load the contents of the first sector of the disk it will then hand control to that um, code in this case it contains the second stage bootloader uh, that code will switch to um, bank zero so we've got the full uh, range of RAM and it will then try to load the next two sectors worth of data which is just the game of life um, now there are of course many things that can stop this working so uh, don't get too optimistic um, this may well not uh, do what it's supposed to there's a lot of things that have to be in place for um, a floppy disk to be successfully read but we'll give it a go see how far we get so press B good heads loaded and we've got the second stage bootloader message and the game of life is running so I'm actually quite surprised I wasn't really expecting that to work first time I was uh, fairly sure we'd get some issues with that let's go try that again just to make sure that um, it does work consistently so we'll reset the machine boot disk is in we'll go through to the monitor and we'll hit the B key for booting from floppy second stage bootloader and it's loaded the data okay that's really good it's um i am quite surprised i wasn't expecting to get um that far uh, on the first try also it looks like the um, interface is doing what it's supposed to so i can remove the bodge wire and um, carry on with the testing so the next thing i want to do of course is um i'll i've already tested the rs232 by the way and that also works fine so again it works fine in both receive and transmit so no issues with that and it means i can load the um, floppy drive test code that we've seen previously into ram try formatting some disks and writing to them make sure that works
Um, if that does work, then in the next video we'll start looking at the DNA system. A lot more complex testing the DNA, there's a lot of things uh, involved with the DNA um, transfer and uh, the way it interacts with the floppy drive control system, so I'm pretty sure we'll encounter some issues with that. Um, but it should be fairly good fun working our way through it and trying to get this to work. But so far this board is uh, working quite nicely.